Hello, welcome to episode 47 of the Epic Film Challenge 2, 1001 Movies You Must See Before You Die, 1931's Le Million, The Million, a French film, uh, directed by René, or René, 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 Claire, <laughs> French filmmaker, uh, and it is a musical comedy. Um, it's a short one, well, it's, it's about an hour and 20 minutes, but uh, it's, it's a pretty simple film that's about a chase for a lottery ticket. Um, the film opens and we have a couple of characters. We have this guy who's a painter and he's a, a struggling painter who's got no money to pay rent or any of the bills that everyone's trying to chase him down for. And he's got a fiance. yet yeah, he's kind of smooching with this model at the same time and he's got a friend of his as well. And those are kind of the four main characters. Then we have this other guy who just appears out of nowhere called uh, uh, Grandpa Tulip. Um, who turns out to be this kind of um, guy in disguise who's almost like a kind of a, a Robin Hood almost who's kind of on the run from the police but he's also trying to make things right I don't know it's, it's kind of hard to kind of pinpoint his character it wasn't really explained right, why he was running from the police in the beginning and what he was really doing later on but he has this group where they go out and they kind of try and make things right in certain things but um, yeah I, I, I thought it was a really good film I really enjoyed it it was a lot of fun the musical aspect was not quite as um, perhaps polished or um, theatrical or uh, well-rounded as I think musicals would become probably particularly in the 50s um, you know there were songs in there that kind of would go along with the film and, and very much like musicals that you probably most of you know the songs would kind of come out of the characters at spontaneous moments and, and wouldn't really kind of it, it almost be part of the narrative it just would happen you know they would just burst into song and start talking about something relating to the film and, and it was fine, but it, it just was there every now and again. Uh, the music throughout was pretty good, um, and the performances were you know, pretty standard, you know, nothing special. Um, and yeah, the main character, the painter, he he wins the lottery. He wins a million, uh, whatever the equivalent is, but it's in a jacket, which his fiance gave away to Grandpa Tulip when he kind of was on the run from the police. So he took a jacket from her, the main character's fiance, and the ticket is in the jacket and off he went and then he sold it to someone else and so you basically go on this ride of them trying to get the ticket and then other people finding out about the ticket and then other people trying to get the ticket and so you've got all these people trying to get the ticket and it ends up in the jacket of a guy who is an opera singer and so the, like the last half hour of the film takes place at the opera and they're all trying to get to the ticket and the show's going on throughout and it, 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 the last half of the film was is its strongest point. I really enjoyed that. Some really funny moments, just great kind of uh, jokes and gags in there without being too over the top. There's a brilliant bit where um, everyone's going for the jacket and it's just a big scramble. And uh, the director Claire, he just put in the, the the sounds of a rugby match and the whistling and stuff. Just everyone scrambling around to get the. I thought it was a really funny little kind of inventive bit of humor there um, that I enjoyed. And yeah, but not much more to say about it really. The opening shot, holy crap! The opening shot of this film was incredible. Um, it's like a, it, I think it said at the beginning, there's like a, a still shot of this theater, and it says this this takes place in Paris somewhere in 1930, and then it opens on kind of a rooftop in Paris, and you see these two people, and then they shut their windows, and then the camera pans across the Paris. You know, rooftops and holy shit the shot goes on forever and, and again you've got this set with these two live you know these actual people and then it just pans on forever and I felt like okay so we're now into miniature it must be because there's no way they built a set this huge and then the shot keeps going and then it ends up and there's more there's two other people on top of this roof looking down into this this room and I thought holy shit like they must have done some really you know clever forced perspective stuff because some of it I wasn't sure. Is that miniature? Is that a full set? Because the opening shot of this film was just phenomenal. And it, it far exceeded anything that the film did after that point. Um, but it was a good start, we'll put it that way. Um, also, I loved this great scene where... And, and one thing I didn't like was that the main character had a fiancé that he loved, but he was kind of you know, smooching with this other girl. I suppose it's just a, a farce comedy, so it doesn't really matter. But I didn't really care for him as a character because of that. I don't know whether I'm just being too harsh on it when you shouldn't be, you know, taking a film this light that seriously. I wasn't taking it seriously, but I just didn't really like the main character because he clearly had someone who was in love with him and he was in love with her, but he's smooching someone else. So, I, yeah, didn't really like that, I guess, I suppose. But he kind of makes it up to her in this scene where they're basically 
on a diff they're on the opera stage when the show's going on, but they're just off the curtain, so the the, the audience can't see them, and they're sat together uh, as part of the show almost, but no one can see them. And as the show's going on, it is a, a kind of a love duet, these two opera singers singing you know, these this love song to each other, and we can hear the song, but we can't hear what the main character and his fiance are saying to each other when as he's trying to 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 win her back basically. And you can see them talking, it just, you know, it's close-up shots of them with their mouths moving and she's saying this and he's saying that and you're kind of getting what's going on in the scene by their body language. He's not getting anywhere with her, she's saying, you know, screw you, no chance and then he kind of wins her over a bit and then the, the petals start falling and they make up and it was just a, a really well done scene. Nothing particularly, you know, groundbreaking about it but just a really cool way uh, of doing a scene like that. You don't hear what they say, but you get what happens because of their body language, but you also have the, the kind of love duet going on in the background that kind of, you know, tells the story even more in a way. I thought that was a really clever, um, just well done, good scene. Um, and also it felt like perhaps the director, Claire, still holding on to a bit of the silent era because towards the last third of the film there would be sequences that could, for all intents and purposes, be a silent film. You know, and, and literally there wouldn't be dialogue, you know, and you'd even see people talking to each other, but you wouldn't hear anything. Um, I mean, that scene I just mentioned at the opera was was very intentional, but it almost felt like maybe they run out of, of sound film or something. It almost felt like that. Or maybe, again, Claire was just kind of bringing a bit more of the silent era with him in this film. I don't know. Anyway, is it a film you must see before you die? Uh, oof, that's a tough one. That is a tough one. Um, yeah, it is. It is. I'll say it is. Because surely this has got to be, you know, one of the first, it has to be one of the first sound musical films. Uh, I mean, I'm sure there are other ones that came before it, you know, I mean, I know the sound was first really introduced in 1927 and then kind of slowly, you know, from that point on would, would come in, but 1931 is still pretty early. And I think it, it, it shows kind of a, an interesting beginning, perhaps, to a musical film or a musical comedy. And uh, I thought, you know, just I really enjoyed. Like the last half is so enjoyable, you won't not have a good time with it. I don't think. Um, you know, there's nothing particularly fantastic about it, but I still think it's worth seeing, and I think it's kind of has its own important place in film history, perhaps. Um, and yeah, just just some good scenes that are, that are worth it in the long run. You know, perhaps the first half isn't very good. Maybe I don't know, uh, and perhaps I don't know. A bit confusing as to who this Grandpa Tulip character is, but nonetheless, I, I would recommend it, and uh, that's all I'm pretty much going to say about it. So, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.